how many I know a few people here, but how many how many you know me? Right? I can see Lynn there, I can see you, I can see that guy there. Of course, yeah. Um as your professor has told you, my name is Peter Oruka. Um he I actually a good hold of me somewhere and invited me to come and um, you know just share my, my thoughts on, on um, this topic we're going to learn um, from next week on, on, on you know sage philosophy. Um, well, sage philosophy is basically um, a brainchild of um, Endodero Ruka, who happens to be uh, my dad, and so you know. It's basically, as I've grown up around, um, you know, just trying to build interest around this discipline and find out more about it. So I thought um, it would be a good idea if, you know, if I just came and, you know, shared my thoughts on, on this. So, basically, I don't, I don't know if you mind if I, if I stand up, but, you know, you know more like um, So... This is a, is a very broad topic. Uh, I mean, I'm even, you know, I'm kind of thinking, you know, where should I start or how should I go about this? But basically, um, sage philosophy is, is, is an expression of thoughts or a way of thinking um, which basically fluctuates between popular wisdom. Popular wisdom basically meaning... Um, you know, maxims, aphorisms, and, you know, common sense truths. And popular wisdom and didactic wisdom. Didactic, didactic wisdom basically involves um, um, wise men and women transcending communal wisdom. So, even before I go into that, um, he advised me, a professor advised me to talk about Henry O'Neill Rupert as a person. Now, well, Henry, or dad, as you call him, was a very, a very charming individual. Um, one of the reasons why, you know, he was able to endear himself to so many people is because he, has a, he had a very good heart, um, but equally good mind as well. Um, he was born in 1944, 1st June 1944 in Western Nyanza in Ugenya, a village called Masiro Nyangungu, Koruka village, because my grandfather is called Oruka Ranginya, so in Luo, we normally name a village um, after, you know, the person who um, has a home, you know, you know, sort of create a, a, a homestead there. And there are various processes when it comes to um, having your own home. As a man, um, there are certain processes which involves a father or a male relatives which ha which have to be performed. These are such as tudulum. Tudulum basically means tying the grass. So it's a male re either an uncle of yours or a father who has to do this. Now these practices nowadays, um, some are practiced, some are not, and this is all thanks to you know slowly and slowly people realizing that they should depend on um, alternatives given by you know sages in, in, in the communities on whether or not to retain certain you know practices and so yeah born in first June on first June 1944 um, grows up basically in, in, in Uganda he goes to Sega so there's a primary school called Sega primary school um, and then later goes to St. Mary's Yala, very popular for rugby nowadays. Mm -hmm. And then from there he goes, uh, slightly to, passes through um, Kenyatta, in, Kenyatta High School before going to Uppsala. Uppsala University is in Sweden, um, where he first of all did um, geography, GeoDC, um, before going to Wayne State for his master's. Now he graduated, he went to Uppsala around 1965, at the age of 21. Uh, graduated in 68, 69, goes for his master's to Wayne State around 25, he was around 25 years old, goes back to Uppsala for his doctorate um, in 1970, 
the same 1970 clears his PhD um, and comes back to Nairobi and becomes a 26-year-old professor. Now, um, at the time, in around the 60s, um, the prevailing um, um, you know, knowledge on, on philosophy was basically derived from anthropological and theological literature. You know, basically literature based on religion. Um, then early 70s, of course, we had John Beatty. How many have heard of John Beatty? Reverend, you know, John Beatty. Masquerading to be a professor. Anyway, um, so John Beatty had his text on Africa, African, uh, African religions and philosophy, um, which basically did not distinguish between, you know, uh, philosophy and religion. So, around the same time, um, Henry Odero Henry Rook in 1971 um, wrote on mythologies as African philosophy and later published this around 1974. Um, this was basically a polem polemical uh, um, attack on you know, John Beatty and Placid Temples. Those are gent a European by the name Placid Temples who wrote on Bantu philosophy. And basically for temples, he was trying to say, or, or he, he claimed that he discovered <coughs> philosophy among the Bantu, which was a sort of unique and was consistent. But unlike his predecessors, what he basically did was to find rationality in the irrational. You know, so... Um, he didn't quite distinguish between African philosophy and African religion. Um, so, you see, then in around 1974, um, Henry Odero uh, um, sort of, he started a project. And the project was under the title, Thoughts of Traditional um, Kenyan Sages. So what was this about? This was about going into villages and trying to find wise men and women who um, were recognized as being wise and trying to find out whether or not they were actually capable of transcending, you know, of communion wisdom. And this project was actually quite successful because we had initially at the University of Nairobi does. Um, the chairman of the department then, under the name Reverend Dr. Bishop Stephen Neal. Now, when my dad came back to, to Kenya, started teaching at the University of Nairobi in 1970, he was with a gentleman called Dr. Nassani. <laughs> now, that, uh, they were first appointed as to tutorial assistants. And, you know, Reverend you know, uh, Stephen Neal used to like referring to them as our two. African assistant, tutorial assistant. They used to sort of please the boss to ignore them. <laughs> such levels. Um, but eventually, you know, Stephen Hill was replaced by Joseph Donders um, in around 1974. Uh, Joseph Donders was very, um, very supportive um, of the project on thoughts of traditional Kenyan sages and, you know, even offered uh, departmental support. If this was very beneficial even to him as, a, as an individual because in his inaugural lecture on it was dubbed Don Fences in the liberating role of philosophy. He actually mentions um, some sages who are interviewed um, during this project. So 1973 um, Philosophical Association of Kenya is you know founded and you know my dad is appointed president of this. 1974, there's a, there's a journal which is launched, dubbed um, Thought and Practice journal. It's, currently it's online. Um, it, you know, they, they, they managed to get it up, up and running again. So that's Thought and Practice. Just go and Google it. You're on free time. So, on, back to the um, subject of sage philosophy. Um, as I mentioned, 
this is a way of thinking or an expression of thoughts um, which fluctuates between didactic wisdom and popular wisdom. And as I mentioned, the popular wisdom has to do with, to, be, to use very simple language, um, basically what everyone else knows. Everyone knows the library is there, cafeteria is there, Rosie is somewhere down there, there's Mama, what's it called again? Uh, Coast dishes? Yeah, just around the corner. Uh, but deductive wisdom has to do with transcending all that, transcending communal wisdom. You know, can you come up with solutions? Can you think as well outside the box? You know, can you offer an alternative to what we already have? Can you offer Vision 2030 after a messy Nyayo for instance? Um, so that's what popular wisdom and deductive wisdom are about. Now, um, there have been some scholars who have also written texts on you know philosophy and what, what they you know think uh, you know philosophy is all about we've had people like you know Barry Barry Hallen um Jay Yosodipo um who have written texts like for instance we've had the you know, mind of the savage uh by you know Sodipo we've had primitive um philosophy by Kwame Gyeke we've had um <coughs> Yeah, primitive philosophy, um, philosophy of the of the savage, um, written in 1938, tell about. So, uh, the problem with some West African philosophers was what they did not um, mention names of the sages they interviewed. Now, the problem here is you cannot count a check or yeah. Make reference when you're, you know, um, deliberating with your colleagues. That's the problem with this. You know, unlike the Kenyan project, which had, you know, identified particular sages who you could attribute certain ideas to. For instance, the Kenyan project um, named people like Ogotemili, um, Masi Grione, Ogotemili. How many of them? Ogotemili? Um, well, Ogotemili was classified as a folk sage. We have folk sage and philosophic sage. Now when I mention popular wisdom, um, in that we have the folk sage, but when I mention uh, uh, didactic wisdom, that's where we have the philosophic sages, the ones who transcend communal wisdom. Now, Ogotemeli wrote on the Dogon beliefs, but he did not quite um, you know, write anything unique about um, the, 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 the Dogon beliefs because they are basically, re, you know, revolving around the same communal religious outlook. But someone like, for instance, Paul Muya Akoko. Paul Muya Akoko um, wrote, or rather talked about, you know, he stated a rather pedestrian fact that in nature is uniform. A human being gives back to a human being. A donkey gives back to a donkey. Um, Hercules gives back to Hercules, you know. So he, he basically <coughs> seemingly made a significant, you know, um, 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 he, he stated significant thoughts. So he was classified as a philosophic saint because of this. Now we have had, you know, Various documented, um, you know, philosophic sages and folk sages. We've had for the philosophic sages, we've had, we've had Oruka Rangina, who's my grandfather. Uh, we've had Stephen uh, Gidanje. We've had Chaungu Barazo. We've, we've had uh, Okemba Simiu Chaungu. Um, you know, we'll find out about them later. But the, the point, the main point here is you understand the distinction between uh, folk sages and philosophic sages. Um, when you, yeah, back to Sodipo and Barry Hale, the West African philosophers did not, you know, um, give names of the people they eat and the sages. Now, the reason for this was, <laughs> and you forgive me for this, is there a Nigerian in the house? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> they had an agreement with sages. Um, no giving out their names because they are masters of medicine. Alright? And this was a, a, a 
private trade, which was not supposed to. They, they are basically not supposed to blow the cover of this thing because they are, you know, witch doctors. They put it in the plain language. Um, so that's why they didn't give reasons of the, the names of the same people. So the problem with this, as I said, you can't, you know, make reference as, of, as opposed to, you know, in comparison to the other project, in the other Kenya project. I feel like I'm talking. Okay. Um, so, as uh, the professor advised, he wanted me to share a bit about my family as well. Well, apart from, you know, that, there is, I have two brothers, one who lives in Los Angeles, I live in Australia, I have two sisters in BC, and one adopted sister who works in Dubai. So those are uh, my brother in Los Angeles is, is an actor. And if you watch the original flash forward, there's a couple of things in there. Um, the one in Australia is a computer engineer. Uh, two sisters in BC are in hospitality. So the one in Dubai is in, uh, is in, is in she works in a, in a clinic, she's a doctor. So, yeah, yes, um, how many are you? Okay, <laughs> probably you should go into Q&A right now. Yeah. Or Kim Ford Mazuri? No, Mukoma? Huh? 
Yeah. So basically, um, you know, whether you like it or not, somehow you end up accidentally falling in love with, you know, this the whole the idea of being an intellectual and living a meaningful life. Because you know, it sort of opens your eyes because you live with someone who, you know, has a very broad mind and makes life much more interesting because you know not so many people <laughs> think the way they do so it's inspired uh, at the same time it's it's kawa say that again omayo bro i'm only how old the thing is, I'm young, so probably that will come to I'm in my 20s. Oh, sorry. Oh, my name? Well, my name is Peter Oruka Odera Uchi. I was born during the day. Ching is the son, so yeah. Next question. I think what I wanted to ask is sort of related to what you asked, is that um, after understanding, you know, or growing in the sage philosophy, what would you say is a major critique and how would you critique it? Exactly. How would I critique um, One way I would critique sage philosophy is the, how they classify the sages. Um, it's easy for, say, a philosophic sage to fluctuate and, you know, or, or change and become a folk sage. Because I may say something very so profound, I may say something very profound, but the next time you meet me and ask me some a question about something totally different, I am not able to give you a very rational or well thought out answer. So, you know, they, they sort of go, they, they keep changing, you know, as, as folk sage can be a philosophic sage and vice versa. That's one of, you know, very, a very um, outstanding criticism of that. Uh, why do you think in Africa we have the philosophical teachings, while in Europe it is philosophers and doctors? I mean, why, why, why do it sound like the two kinds of philosophy? All right, all right, let me just demystify that for you. We've had Thales, Anaximander, Heraclitus, uh, Parmenides, um, Socrates, and these were the ones, if you look at Black and Tenor, uh, these were the ones who were uh, um, named the true philosophers, isn't it? But, you see, uh, this was a, a white male perspective. I call it white male because Europe was also, you know, patriarchal, whether, you know, they like to admit it or not, before. So, it's actually um, the same thing, only different. Because this time, it's it, it's more um, it, it's more valid because we have a distinction. Because the, the mistake the Greeks made were, was they did distinguish between the ones who were foxes and philosophers, and that's what Athens did. So, in my view, Athens even did better com compared to the Europeans because you know they actually. Um, you can actually have a comparison and, you know, distinguish between different kinds of <coughs> philosophers, you know, because we have sages and we have, you know, we have a sage and we have a sage philosopher, but, that, you know, that's a story for another day, but, do you understand that? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I knew it'd come to that question. Is there any written, written documentation by these wise people? You see, the problem here is most of them, the point was going to traditional Africa. Alright? Look for the illiterate, <laughs> illiterate wise people. Alright? So one of the arguments or criticisms of sage philosophy was that there was no written evidence or knowledge by these wise people. And that was one of the reasons why this project, you know, was done. To show that it's not, literacy is not a prerequisite for wisdom. 
you don't have to know how to write in Word. So, um, we don't have texts written by the cities themselves. It's the, it's, it's the work of the um, professional philosophers who explicate the philosophical underpinnings of you know, the um, non-professional philosophers.